Today we're looking at JavaScript in the shell. I'm not talking Node.js, and I'm not talking about scripting using something like PhantomJS, which both those things are great for their uses, but we're talking about actually web browsing in your shell with JavaScript. There are plenty of shell web browsers out there, Lynx, Elynx, W3M, amongst others. But the problem a lot of them is that they don't support JavaScript. And if they do, it's usually minimal. Most of the web uses JavaScript, whether you like it or not. So today we're going to look at an option that allows us to do that. Let's look at it and then talk about why you might want to use this. As I'm clicking record here, I'm realizing I'm not really sure how you say something. I'm assuming Browse, but it's browser for your shell. It's a modern text-based browser. Now, what exactly, how exactly does this work? Like they have a little preview here where you're watching a YouTube uh, video in your shell. Does it really work like this? Actually, it, it, it does. It works halfway decent for what it's for. In most cases, you're probably not going to use this, but there are some case scenarios where it is useful. I would not think of this as a lightweight browser like you would think of um, like Elinks or Lynx, you know, other shell-based browsers, because this actually runs Firefox headless in the background, but then basically takes ASCII screen grabs of it and displays it in your shell. Uh, so. It's not lightweight, so you might be thinking, why, why would you use this? And we'll get to that. But let's look at how to install it. So right here, you can grab just a binary le release, which is around 7 megabytes, or you can grab the Docker one that's 230 megabytes, which probably has Firefox and all that in it. Uh, I don't know why you would do that. In most cases, I would just go grab the release. When I came in here, I, gra I just found my Linux AMD 64, grabbed the executable and went. There's also a dev package in here, which will probably install dependencies if you don't have them. But since I already have a basic system with Firefox installed. I just needed the executable, I downloaded it, and I put it in my path directory. Let's go ahead and see it in action. So once I have it set up, I'm just gonna run that executable, give it a URL. You know what, for comparison, let's open up my website, filmsbychris.com. So this is what my website looks like right now. And you can see it's scrolled, we have search here, where I can type in something like Linux, and it's going to search using Got to spell things right though. Uh, and it uses JavaScript for all that, the scrolling and uh, the search there and loading the default images. So let's go into the shell and run this. Give it a second, it's loading Firefox and here is my website. Uh, it even loads up the ad. Now, I haven't tried this, but I guess if you have um, plugins or an extensions installed in Firefox, they will activate here. Just like in my browser here, I'm running Brave, uh, which has an ad blocker, so it blocks that ad. The ad there does show up. You come down here and you can see the videos. I can click inside the search bar here and I can type in Linux and it doesn't work super fast here, but give it a moment and it will load up the names and give it another moment and it will load up the images. So basically it's loading all these thumbnails and it's gonna to convert to ASCII. I would think it would work a little bit faster than this, but it does work. And then once they are loaded, I can click on one of them to go to that. Um, so that's how that works. Let's uh, go back to their GitHub page and actually uh, let's go here. Oh, I meant to go here. And we are going to look at um, usage documents, which will actually bring us to their website. And I'm gonna go to key bindings because it's gonna be kind of important. Uh, so you can see here, there's a few simple key bindings. Uh, scrolling, you want to go back in history is backspace. Focus on the URL bar is Control L, uh, which is normal in most browsers. Uh, Control Q will quit you out of it. You can do Control W to close a tab. Control T to open a new tab. Control R to reload. And then cycle through your tabs. It's actually Control backslash. So let's go in here and I'll Control T, open up a new bar. I'll just type in, I don't know, google.com. And let's see if that loads. There we go, here's Google. And again, I can click on everything, so like I can click on About, and it should open up there About. Yep, it's loading, it says down here at the bottom. And there we go. Again, it's not, it's not very light, it's not super fast, um, but it is usable. And let's talk about why you might use this and why I ended up looking it up the other day to solve a problem. So everybody has different scenarios and this might be something that's useful for you. In most cases, I don't think it's super useful, but it did save me the other day. I was 
out and about. I was not at my house. And um, there was a problem with my network. It was just running really, really slow. And I do a lot of stuff off my servers here. So I needed to restart my router, which would require me to log into the web interface on my local network, because I don't have it opened up. You, you can open up your router's uh, configurations to the whole world, but probably not the best idea. So for me to access the configuration for my router, I have to be on my local network. And one thing I could have done, and something I probably have done in the past for this exact scenario, is you can use SSH and tunnel through uh, using socks. So when you're browsing through your web, it's going through your, your network at home. Um, but I didn't want to go through all, it's not that hard to set up, it's just a SSH command going into your uh, browser configuration and say, look at this uh, port for socks. But I didn't even want to do that, I was like, how can I use my shell? I can just SSH in to my computer here at home and access the web browser. And of course I could also do another option would be SSH and using X forwarding, but I just wanted to do it in the shell. So I was able to just download this binary I, I, to my server here at home. I started up, pointed it at uh, the router, logged in, uh, and it's a very simple interface, but it does require JavaScript. I just logged in, clicked the restart button right in the shell, and it restarted, and a little bit later, uh, my network was back up and running. So that's that's what I used it for. I needed to access a web uh, site with JavaScript through SSH, and I didn't want to do any SOX forwarding or X uh, forwarding, and just do it in the shell, and this accomplished it for me. So, uh, although it may not be something I use regularly, I'm glad that I have, I know about it and that I have it installed and even if I didn't, it's only a 3 to 7 megabyte download, 7 megabytes for the binary, 3 for the dev, which might install some other dependencies. But uh, I hope you find this useful and maybe it will get you out of a jam like it got me out of a jam or maybe you have other uses for it. Let me know if you've used it, let me know if you tried it after watching this video, let me know why you used it and what you thought. Comment below, filmsbychris.com, have a great day.